Good afternoon. I'm Chris Kearns, and this is Namaste Yoga Studio. I'm going to be doing a yin practice for you today. I find that yin is a great complement to my other practice. It's just a slower, quieter, more introverted type of practice. And in today's times, I find that I'm doing a little more yin than in my regular practice just because I need that quietness. I need to kind of readjust myself and make sure that I can settle in. One of the nice things about yin is it really works with the parasympathetic nervous system and it really gets you into that rest and digest mode and so you're not so reactive. So today's practice, we're going to start off, um, you're going to need a few props. One of the things with yin, we like to have props that make it so we can hold these poses for about three to five minutes. We really want to get into that connective tissue and make that tissue pliable. So if you don't have a bolster, you can always use a couch cushion. Um, you can roll up a heavy duty blanket and kind of make it really nice and snug and tight. Um, you want to use a thick blanket. Um, I use this to pad my knees. I've got uh, bad knees, so this helps to provide me with a little bit of padding so my knees aren't directly on the floor. Um, and I'm using a thicker mat. So we're going to start off today coming into a tabletop position. And in our tabletop position, we want to have our fingertips directly underneath the shoulders, our knees underneath the hips. We're just going to kind of hug that belly to the spine. And as we exhale, we're going to tuck that chin, bring that spine up towards the ceiling. We're just really getting into that movement. On our inhale, we're going to lift the chin, lift the tail. As we exhale, our angry cat pose. And then on our inhale, lift the chin, melt the heart forward, lift the tail. And just let that breath guide that movement as you cycle through cat and cow. Just notice, uh, noticing how the spine feels. The next breath, we're going to meet in a neutral spine. We're going to go ahead and let's take the knees a little further apart. I'm going to take my bolster and I'm going to come into a supported child's pose. So I'm going to turn my head to whichever direction feels best and just settle in, sinking into those hips, letting myself just rest for a moment. Just notice the lower back, notice the hips. hands underneath the shoulders, take the knees back to center. I'm going to move my bolster out of the way and head back into my cat and cow sequence. 
Just noticing how my spine feels. Noticing how my breath is. Again, we like to get to the point where there's a little bit of intensity in the pose. And then we use the props to help hold us in that position so we can get into the connective tissue and really make that tissue pliable. Cycle through one more breath. We're going to walk the fingertips of the left hand forward. Is we're going to reach that right arm up in towards the ceiling. And as we exhale, let's go ahead and thread that arm underneath the left arm. Now, as we're holding this pose, you may find that you need the block or a bolster to kind of lay the temple on to make the pose a little more accessible. Just find where you can hold the position for a few moments. And just settle in, focusing in on that breath. Next breath, let's slide that left hand underneath the left shoulder, release the right shoulder, and cycle through cat and cow. Just noticing how the spine feels, noticing how the hips are. Two more breaths, meeting in a neutral spine. We're going to walk the fingertips of the right hand forward a little bit, reach that left arm up towards the ceiling. On our exhale, let's go ahead and bring the temple to the floor, to the block, to your bolster. Just take that twist as deep as you feel comfortable. If you'd like to extend the fingertips of that right hand forward or wrap that right arm to the lower back, feel free to take that twist a little deeper. Just consider how you're feeling with the pose. And let yourself settle in, just noticing. And with the next breath, let's slide that right hand underneath the right shoulder, release that left shoulder, make our way to a cat and cow. Just noticing. Take a moment to check in with your body. Notice how your breath feels. Notice if it helps for you to move your fingertips forward to shift forward a little bit or shift back. Just 
noticing how that additional dynamic movement feels. And then when you're ready, we're going to get ready for the next pose. So I'm going to take my blanket. I'm actually going to open it up wider than my mat. I'm going to fold it over. And then I'm going to take my bolster and place it on top of the mat. So I'm going into frog pose. So I want my ankles and my legs to mimic frog legs. So I'm going to take the knees out a little bit, turn my toes out, and you may need to pad the ankles on your floor, and go ahead and bring my upper body on the bolster. So the more weight you have on the bolster, the easier this pose is. If you would like more intensity, you can just have the upper body on the pose and keep it open in the hip area. So what this does is it slowly lets gravity begin to open up the hips and let you settle in. I've really been liking the frog pose lately. I find when I'm really stressed, a little overwhelmed, as we all are probably feeling this way now, um, that this pose really kind of suits me right now. It just lets me sink down, get into the hips, and just release any tension I may have in the hips in the lower back region. So I like to settle in and I like to make this part of my practice on a regular basis just because I find that this pose is very nurturing for me right now. You can turn your head to whichever direction suits you and just let yourself settle in and we're going to hold this pose for a few moments so make sure you're comfortable. If you don't have a couch cushion you can also use a block at various different heights underneath the upper body and just kind of settle in with a blanket on top of the blocks. the next breath, let's go ahead and place our hands on either side of the mat. I sort of just let my knees draw together and then slide the bolster up from underneath you. Let's go ahead and bring ourselves all the way down to the floor. Place our forehead on top of our hands and just sort of let the hips melt into the mat. Noticing how the hips feel. See if you can soften a little bit. And then use your breath to kind of scan your body. We want to look through our body and kind of look for any place where there might be some sort of resistance. And we'll use the breath to kind of unravel any tension you find.
So I'm going to draw my legs together and I'm going to really press the tops of the feet into the mat. Just noticing how when I press the tops of my feet into the mat, like I can imprint each toenail into the mat. I notice that there's a little bit of energy from the arches that go up into the calf muscles, into the legs, and kinds of pools right there in the hip girdle. I want to keep all that energy there. Then nudge my shoulders onto the back. And then draw my elbows underneath the shoulders and I come into what we call Sphinx Pose. Now with Sphinx Pose, my eyes are going to be looking down at my fingertips so I can protect that cervical spine. And I really want to feel like that heart is melting forward and I'm lifting out of the hips. Almost like there's, I'm elongating the body and finding that length in my spine. I'm going to hold this for a few breaths, just noticing how this feels. Taking a moment to just settle in and explore Sphinx Pose. Now you can stay right here in Sphinx if you'd like, or if you'd like to take it a little deeper, you can slide the fingertips forward a few inches, lift the elbows, and press up into what we call seal pose. Now seal pose is a deeper back bend, so don't try this if you have lower back injuries, but just notice if you can really find that length in the spine, that opening, letting that heart melt forward. One more breath. Let's sink all the way to the floor. Cross the hands one on top of the other. Place the forehead on top of the hands. And just let yourself melt back into the mat. Noticing how your body feels. Noticing the hips. Let's turn our head to the right. We're going to slide that right knee up. Kind of coming into a half fetal position. This lets us open up and decompress that lower back. Release that right leg. Turn the head to center. Just pause for a moment. Noticing where you are. Then turn the head to the left. Slide that left knee up. Release the left leg, turn the head to center. We're going to place both hands on either side of the mat. We're going to press back into a child's pose. So you have options here. If you want to take the knees apart, you can go ahead and take the knees apart. If you'd like to just keep the knees together and just sort of sink into the bows, feel free. If you'd like to bend the elbows and bring the hands behind the head, feel free to take it there. Just notice how it feels. Notice what works for you. With the 
next breath, let's go ahead, come out of that pose. I'm going to fold my blanket so I have a little bit of height here. And I'm going to bring my bolster. I'm going to extend my legs out so wide as I'm comfortable. And just notice how you're feeling. I'm going to take this bolster and I'm going to line it up with my right leg. We're going to lengthen through the spine and just sort of twist and bring myself over that right leg. Now, depending on how you have your bolster, you can just go ahead and use your bolster on top of the leg. If you can't bend that much, you can always sort of hug your bolster and just lean forward. It's not really about getting your nose to the knee. It's more about that stretch that you feel in that lower back as we hold this pose for a few moments, just beginning to open up those muscles in the lower back. With the next breath, I'm going to move my bolster over to the opposite leg. I'm going to lengthen through the spine, twist at the waist, and bring myself over the opposite leg. And just sort of let myself settle in. One side may be more flexible in the back than the other. And that's perfectly natural. Just take into consideration where you are today in your practice. And just make accommodations to yourself as we settle in and go through this. With the next breath, I'm going to go ahead and take a couple of blocks. And depending on how open your back is, you can arrange them in different heights. And we're going to go ahead and take advantage of opening on the right side and the left side to see if we can come down to the center and come into a forward fold. And just notice how you feel, and just work to feel comfortable in the pose. And as you're holding the pose, your body may invite you to go deeper. Feel free to take advantage of that opening and settle in at the next option.
Knees out of the pose. We're going to slide the bolster to the side. Bring the blocks up towards the front of the mat. And I'm going to go ahead and take my blanket and open it up a little bit. So most of our poses have been on the floor. And, you know, sometimes with begin practice, I like to keep my socks on just because I like to keep my feet warm. So we're going to go into a downward dog. And with the downward dog, you want to make sure the socks are off just so you can grip to the mat. Let's go ahead and go up into our downward dog, pedal through the feet. And just notice how your hips feel, how your back feels. You maybe need to pedal through. I'm going to go ahead and shift the weight into my left leg, raise my right leg up towards the ceiling, kind of bend through the knee, and let's look underneath that armpit just a little bit. So I find that space on the right side of the body. I'm going to draw my right knee up by my right wrist. And I'm going to kind of sink into what we call pigeon pose. Um, it's also called swan in yin practice. So some of the poses in yin have different names. My shin is across the body. And however I choose to do this, I want to make sure that I keep this foot flexed so I have protection for my knee joint. I slide a block underneath my hip. It just makes the pose a little easier for me to hold for a few minutes. And I'm going to bring the bolster down and just take my elbows to the bolster. So this sets me up to be able to hold this hip opener for a few moments and lets me settle in and sink into what we call sweeping, sleeping swan or reclining pigeon pose. Again, you've noticed that most of our poses are a little more introverted. We kind of just sort of settle in, find that pose, and just kind of go inward, just focusing in on the breath and how your body feels. Really just taking these moments to kind of connect with your body and your breath. Place the hands at either side of the mat. Curl the toes under. And you can make your way to a tabletop or to a downward dog. Whichever one works best for you. If you do the tabletop, let's go ahead and make circles. Going one direction and then the other direction. Or if you go all the way up into down dog, just do the same thing. We're lubricating that hip joint. So just notice how that feels. Bring yourself back to a down dog and just sort of pedal into the feet, 
Just notice how the hips feel. Then go ahead, open up that left side. We're going to draw that left knee up towards the left wrist. Slide the block underneath the hip if you need to use the block. And bring the bolster, settling all the way into our pigeon pose or sleeping swan on the opposite side. You know, one side may be a little more difficult than the other. Just go ahead, use your props to help get you comfortable so you can hold the pose for a few moments and really notice yourself settling in and focused in on the pose. Breath. Let's place the hands on either side of the mat. We're going to go ahead and make our way either to our tabletop pose or to our down dog pose. Drawing the knees underneath the hips, making circles one direction and then in the other direction, or if you prefer. Going into the down dog and just making the circles. Just notice how the hips feel and then let the knees sink to the mat. Slide the bolster out of the way. Take the knees as far apart as you're comfortable and sink into a child's pose. Just letting this moment sort of settle. Noticing the hips. Noticing the lower back.
behind Van Nagel pose. You can go ahead and I'm just going to show you the best way. I kind of take the bolster and put the small block underneath and then lean back. I'm not going to do the recline myself, but if you'd like to take your couch cushion and do so for yourself, feel free to do so. I'm going to bring the soles of the feet together and I'm going to let the knees go out to the side. Now you may need to use blocks underneath the knees to kind of give you a little bit of support. And we want to bring the heels close to the groin as you're comfortable. I'm going to lengthen through the spine, hinge at the hips, kind of sink forward. Just noticing how it feels in the lower back. This is a great pose to do if you've got really tight hamstrings and you can't do get into that lower back region to stretch it out. fingertips back. And let's go ahead and get ourselves ready for the next pose. So we've done a lot of hip openers today. And with hip openers, um, you need to reset the hips afterwards. So this next pose is called deer pose. So I'm going to bring the block in front, grab my bolster. And so my right knee is kind of lined up, and my shin is lined up with the front of my mat. My foot is flexed to protect that knee joint. And I'm going to bring the bolster right down in front. And I'm just going to let my body go ahead and cascade over the bolster. My left leg is going ahead head here. And I've kind of got it bent at a right angle. And then my ankle is at a right angle as well. So this just really resets my hips because we've done the frog pose and we've done the swan pose. Both poses really focus in on the hips and the hip connection and it kind of helps to really balance out your walking stride. So this, this pose helps me reset my hips. So afterwards, after my practice, I don't look so much like I've just gotten done riding a horse.
next breath, I'm going to take my bolster. I'm going to leave my legs in the same position. And I'm going to line that bolster up with the right hip. This is called sometimes mermaid pose. It's just a different way of doing the twist. I'm going to kind of bring myself down and just sort of lay so I have that twist going on. If I really want to take the twist deep, I can turn my head away from the camera, kind of to the back wall. But this today, I'm just going to keep it right here and just sort of let myself settle in. And just notice the opening in the back. Just settle in there for a few moments, breathing into the position. Let's place the hands on either side of the mat and unravel the legs and let's go to the other side. So my left leg lines up in front of the mat. I have the foot flexed to protect my knee joint. I'm going to take my bolster, bring it down in front of that left leg and sort of just let my body cascade over that left leg, sort of settling in, just noticing where I am. My right leg is at a right angle, coming out of the hip, and the ankle is at a right angle with my shin. Breath. Let's ease out of the pose. I'm going to take the bolster over to the opposite side. Set block up. Bring it right next to the hip. And bring ourselves down, coming into mermaid on the opposite side. You may notice this pose is a little easier on one side than the other, and that's perfectly normal. Just let yourself settle in. 
you'd like to take the pose a little deeper, you can go ahead and twist your head towards the back of the room. Or just settle in and let yourself relax. Press your hands on either side of the mat, pressing away from the bolster. We're going to take both legs, bring them up in front, pull the flesh and seat out from underneath us. We take the bolster, place it on top of our legs. So this pose is called caterpillar pose. It's very similar to if we were to do a forward fold. The whole idea is we're going to lengthen through the spine and just let the body cascade over the bolster. If you need to, you can go ahead and place your block on top of the bolster. You can kind of settle in, just letting yourself just settle in, breathing into that back. Begin to ease out of the pose. So let's go ahead and make ourselves comfortable and get ready for Shavasana. So if you'd like to just lay flat on your mat, um, go ahead and just get yourself ready to sort of settle in and seal in your practice. Feel free to do that. We're going to go and sink into Shavasana. And you can make your Shavasana as long as you'd like. Um, even though it may go beyond um, how long our practice is on Facebook Live. Uh, but just find a way to get yourself comfortable laying on your back, put a bolster underneath the legs. Um, just get yourself settled. Wrap yourself up with a warm blanket.
And as you're singing into Shavasana, I'm going to be reading prayers to the infinite from Don Foles. Uh, life comes calling. Life itself expands me when I let it. I point to my known edge and say, that's it. I can't go any further. That's my limit. But of course, life comes calling as it always does, not respecting my borders, asking me to stretch again, and then still more, until I can't even recognize who I am. You know how it is, challenge, tragedy, grief, or ecstasy. Where I am right now just can't be static. The pull towards God and evolution is too strong. When I let go, when I allow life in, I grow before I even notice what is happening. And now you can stay in Shavasana if you'd like and continue your Shavasana as long as you want. Or if you'd like to wrap up your practice, let's go ahead, draw the knees to our chest, hug the knees into the heart, and just sort of rock from side to side, slowly massaging the lower back. Let the knees fall to whichever side serves your practice. And just pause there a moment, feeling the earth support you, just feeling how your body feels. And placing your hands on the floor, push your body away from the floor. Let's find a seated pose. Let's draw the hands to heart center. Bow your head. Thank you so much for sharing your practice with me today. May the rest of the week be filled with opportunities for you to step back, settle in, and just explore all of the ways you've overcome all of the challenges that you're currently facing. And remember when love is present, all things are possible. Namaste. Thank you guys so much for practicing with me today. I hope you enjoyed our yin practice. And join us again tomorrow. We'll have another practice at 5.30 and a practice in the morning at 9. Thank you guys.